Part 1 In this video lesson, you will learn how to draw an anatomically correct portrait. The model for this portrait will be the marble statue carved by French sculptor Guillaume Cousteau. This sculpture is displayed in the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. The skull and shoulder bones. Let's begin with the skeletal anatomy. The spinal column has two distinct curves, the curve of the neck region and the curve of the ribcage region. They are arched in opposite directions. At the top, there is the mass of the skull. The upper part of the skull is called the cranium. It encapsulates and protects the brain. The frontal lower part of the skull is the facial part. We see the model's head in profile. From this point of view, the head can be inscribed by a square. By dividing the height of the skull in half, we can locate the position of the eye socket. The ear channel is located right above the first vertebra of the spine. Above it, there is the cheekbone arch. The hinge of the lower jaw is located just in front of the air channel underneath the cheekbone arch. Right behind the air channel, there is the bony process on the base of the skull. This is the place where the neck muscles attach to the skull. The cranium section of the skull consists of eight bones. They are fused together and form the cranium dome and the cranium floor. The facial part of the skull is formed by 14 bones. The lower jawbone is the only bone of the skull that moves. The U-shaped tongue bone is located underneath the lower jaw. The neck region of the spine consists of seven vertebrae. This number is not unique for humans. In fact, many animals have seven bones in the neck spine. The very top vertebra is called the atlas because it holds the sphere of the skull. The joint between this vertebra and the skull allow the head to rotate up and down in a nodding movement. This is the first pair of ribs. It has a circular outline and appears, in perspective, as an oval. The axis of this oval is slightly tilted downwards. At the front, this pair of ribs is connected to the top part of the breastbone.
Just above the first rib is the collarbone. Its inner side is also attached to the top of the breastbone. The collarbone is curved. The inner half goes along the rib and the outer half is bent to follow the shoulder axis. We see the second collarbone in perspective and therefore it is quite foreshortened. At the back, the first pair of ribs is connected to the first vertebra of the ribcage region. In the front, the second pair of ribs is connected to the breastbone in the place where the breastbone, head, and body meet together. The frontal portion of every rib has a softer and more flexible structure. It is called the cartilage. There are seven true ribs that are directly attached to the breastbone in the front. With every following rib, the rib cage becomes wider until it reaches the eighth rib where it is the widest. The outer edge of the collarbone is connected to the shoulder blade in the part that is called the acromion of the shoulder blade. This acromion hangs above the shoulder joint protecting the head of the upper arm bone. This head has a round shape about the size of a golf ball. The upper arm has one bone. It's called the humerus. The groove next to the humerus head is the place for a muscle tendon. Next to this round head, there is a bony projection of the shoulder blade which looks like a bird's beak. We will examine all major muscles of the shoulder region in the next video. To depict the three-dimensional nature of these bones, I will apply a watercolor wash. For this purpose, I will use a single color tint. Such technique is called the griselle. It is drawing paper and, strictly speaking, it is not really suitable for watercolor as it will buckle when wet. I am using a very old but reliable squirrel brush. It holds watercolor well and is a perfect tool for such washes. If you are drawing along with this video lesson, the watercolor step is completely optional. You don't have to tint bones unless you want to try how it feels. In the next video lesson, you will learn the main muscles of the head, neck, and shoulders.